Points to Ponder by Nir Minusi. This podcast is made possible by our kind supporters over at Patreon. Parshat Vayechi, which tribe do you belong to? One of the most captivating topics in psychology is that of personality types. That each one of us is different and unique, we know. That we're all human, governed by the same basic psychological laws, we also know. But could there also be a middle ground between our universal humanity and our specific individuality? Some level to our identity that doesn't only tell us that we are a person, but also what kind of person we are. This is where theories of personality types come in, assigning us to distinct psychological groups, virtual soul families, as it were, each with its own set of characteristics. Thus, for example, you may be a leader, an adventurer, an analyzer, and so on. One approach divides us into four types, another into 16 types, and yet others into other numbers. These theories can be seen as modern reincarnations of ancient systems such as astrology, which also divides us into groups, according to our zodiac sign, and on that basis makes assertions about our nature, our purpose, even our fate. In the Torah too, we can find the concept of personality types. It's found in this week's Torah portion, Vayechi, the last portion in the book of Genesis. Genesis is called the Book of the Patriarchs, It's not surprising, then, that it concludes with the death of the third and final patriarch, Jacob, also known as Israel, and with the blessings that he gives to his sons. With Jacob, nascent Judaism advances a level. While Abraham and Isaac each had only one son fit to follow in their footsteps, Jacob is unique in that his bed is complete. That's what the sages said about him. He leaves the world on his deathbed, surrounded by a dozen sons who all swear to continue his legacy, each one going on to found one of the twelve tribes of Israel, or in Joseph's case, even two tribes. Two new things happen here. First of all, there are now several sons following in their father's footsteps. And second of all, all sons take part in continuing the legacy. The Divine Covenant, originally revealed only to Abraham, begins to branch out and, like a sunbeam passing through a stained glass window, breaks into different colored beams. Yet no light particle is lost. All hues complete each other and join together to create a higher unity, a whole that is greater than the sum of its parts. Notice that Jacob is very careful about giving each son a strengthening blessing that suits him. Even Simon and Levi's blessings, which on the surface sound like curses, have always been interpreted in a positive light. And indeed, later on in history, both these sons become important tribes, with Moses, Aaron, and Miriam, as well as the entire dynasty of Levites and priests, all coming from Levi. In thus blessing his sons, Jacob is rectifying, having given a coat of stripes only to his most beloved son Joseph, which aroused the jealousy of the brothers. One commentary describes the coat as having different colored stripes. Following this image, we can say that in the beginning, Jacob bequeathed all of his colors to Joseph. That's why all the brothers' sheaves had to bow down to his in his dream. Now he realizes that every child must receive his own individual color. The blessings aren't equal in length. Judah and Joseph each receive five long verses. Gad, Asher, and Naphtali are each given one short verse, and Simon and Levi share one blessing. The blessings are all of equal value, but it's not a quantitative equality equality in terms of length, but a qualitative one. Each son receives exactly the right words for him to be able to realize his mission and purpose. Later in Jewish history, ten of the twelve tribes broke away and ended up scattered among the nations. Virtually all Jews living today are descended from the two remaining tribes, that of Judah and of Benjamin. But an important Midrash explains that, spiritually, each of the blessings given by Jacob applies to all of the tribes, and therefore to all of us. This is learned from the verse in Genesis 49.28, And he blessed them? Each was blessed with his own blessing. This appears to be a redundant repetition. So the answer is that the first part of the verse refers to each individual blessing, but the second half of the verse refers to 
him applying all blessings to all of the siblings. Two points emerge from this idea. First, each of us has within us an aspect of every tribe. And second, each of us may be connected to one specific tribe and be its spiritual child, regardless of which tribe we physically descend from. This concept underlies an entire topic in Kabbalah, originating in Sefer Yetzirah, the Book of Formation, according to which the 12 tribes correspond to the 12 months of the year and also to 12 spiritual senses, unique abilities or talents that shine or are strengthened during their respective months. In other words, there are 12, or with Joseph's sons, 13 Jewish personality types. Each one of us belongs to one of them by virtue of the month we were born in, but also we can connect to all of them as we go through the yearly cycle. This concept also imparts an important and deep principle regarding educating children. We all know the verse in Proverbs, He who spares the rod hates his son. On a simple level, this means that one who refuses to punish or rebuke his child, in fact, hurts him. But Hasidut suggested an additional original interpretation. The Hebrew word for rod, shevet, also means tribe. According to this, the verse can be read as saying, He who spares, i.e. prevents, his child from connecting to his or her soul tribe, this is the one who is hurting their child. As parents and educators, we have the obligation to recognize regarding each child what is their spiritual root and make sure they connect to that root, to that tribe. We could say that the literal meaning of the verse, the one referring to discipline, refers to the external aspect of education, whereas this novel Hasidic interpretation refers to the inner aspect of education, connecting each child to his or her spiritual root. Point to ponder. Each person belongs to a particular family of souls, a spiritual tribe. Our self-realization very much depends on us identifying our tribe and connecting with it. But our spiritual tribe is not necessarily that of all of our children. When raising our child, we need to ask ourselves what their spiritual root is and how to best facilitate their bond with it. Hi, if you enjoyed this episode, please leave a like and subscribe. You may also consider becoming a supporter by going over to patreon.com slash nearmenusi. That's patreon.com slash nearmenusi. Thank you.